All right, so uh, my name is uh, Philippe Bergeon. Uh, I am a product manager at uh, Nokia, and I'm here to discuss uh, network security uh, in the context of DDoS. Um, and in particular, I'm uh, going to try to answer the question on this slide, uh, which really is, uh, what can be done uh, in 2019 uh, to uh, solve uh, distributed denial of service attacks and large-scale volumetric attacks in general? And to answer those questions, I'm first going to uh, walk you through the different uh, solutions that have been deployed by network operators uh, over the past 15 years uh, up until now, uh, and also present you um, some uh, new solutions available today uh, from Nokia uh, to address this uh, particular concern. So uh, if you're looking at the, uh, the state of internet uh, today, and with this ever-growing uh, number of uh, devices connected to our networks, uh, those are really a great opportunity for uh, malicious actors uh, to launch powerful uh, distributed denial of service attacks. Uh, the way it works is that those malicious actors take advantage of uh, compromised devices. Uh, those can be uh, server applications, uh, they can be um, uh, home gateway routers, and especially uh, in the past couple of years, uh, IoT devices uh, have been a prime target. So those attackers uh, take advantage of vulnerabilities in those devices. Um, so it can be uh, for a server application, uh, an administrator is uh, not uh, using the proper security uh, configuration for a particular server, but that's uh, not very common. It can, it can happen. What's uh, really a prime target is uh, IoT devices, uh, especially in the past couple of years with the rise of those uh, number of devices. And uh, unfortunately, um, those have been prime targets because this particular market segment really um, has not focused on security uh, in general. So those devices are unsecure by default uh, or have a very low um, uh, security posture. So if you're looking at the largest uh, botnet today, uh, they can comprise tens of thousands of devices to hundreds of thousands of devices. So really with this uh, larger number of uh, devices that can be used uh, by attackers, uh, those are really uh, fueling uh, much more powerful uh, distributed denial of service attacks. So when in the past, uh, distributed denial of service attacks uh, used to be in the gigabit range uh, 10 years ago, uh, launched by uh, a couple servers uh, to an attack target, nowadays, uh, distributed denial of service attacks can reach terabit level attacks. So uh, if you've seen in the news in the past couple months, it was no later than last year, uh, there's been the two largest uh, distributed denial of service attacks to date. So one was on GitHub, and the other one was on a, a North American provider. So those attacks uh, were to the range of 1.3 terabit per second to 1.7 terabit per second. So really, we are uh, on a very different type of scale of attack. And when you see this type of attack and the frequency of those attacks, you kind of have to ask yourself the question, so how can you protect your network from such uh, an attack? Is your network ready to sustain such an attack? Or are you going to be the new uh, network operator uh, that is going to be in the news, such as in this slide, as being a victim of uh, such a large uh, distributed attack? So in order to, uh, to, to, to walk you through uh, uh, what has been deployed and uh, what could be deployed by network operator, um, first I'm going to uh, give you a couple of slides on typical solutions that have been deployed. So um, the most common solution that has been deployed is a, a centralized scrubbing center. So in this uh, particular case, and uh, this is the case where um, uh, the attack is typically coming in northbound, so from your peering edge and attacking a particular uh, target within your network. So this would be typically a data center application or a business customer. And so this attack is detected at the peering edge. So uh, using NetFlow type of uh, uh, telemetry information, the attack is identified and the traffic is being redirected to a centralized uh, scrubbing center. Um, from there, uh, the traffic is uh, cleaned and sent out to its uh, final destination. So uh, this type of solution works fine up to the final uh, amount of traffic that that centralized scrubbing center can process. Uh, and it's also typically targeted to protect uh, a certain set of business customers or typically your data center application but it doesn't protect your network infrastructure as a whole. Uh, it doesn't protect your uh, subscriber either. So what can be done to protect all those uh, assets within the, within the company? 
So this type of uh, solution is really addressing a specific set of the market segment and is also limited to the maximum capacity of that particular scrubbing center. Uh, and when this scrubbing center is typically uh, out of capacity, what can be deployed is a very basic uh, mitigation rule at the peering edge to completely drop all the traffic going to a particular customer. So obviously, uh, from a user experience and from a customer experience, uh, this is obviously not the greatest experience because at this point, uh, we have completed the DDoS. Um, another type of uh, mitigation that can be deployed is uh, simply the uh, installing an appliance in front of a customer. So instead of being offline, like the offline scrubbing center, the appliance can be in line just in front of the uh, uh, customer site. Um, so this can be deployed in front of many customers. Obviously, there is a cost for uh, this type of technology. And uh, there is also a limitation, which is uh, this particular customer is only able to uh, mitigate the attack to, this, to the scale of this particular uh, appliance and also to the scale of the link uh, and the bandwidth to that particular site. If the attack was to be larger than the site, then the attack is completed at this point, again, in this particular type of design. So what we are seeing is that, uh, what we've seen from our customers is that really um, the uh, uh, attack surface um, and the attack parameter is, is, is really um, changing. So like I mentioned earlier on, uh, we have compromised devices uh, not just coming from the internet, but those compromised devices can also be uh, located from within your own network. How can you uh, mitigate those? Uh, you cannot mitigate those using the centralized coming center or within the inline appliance. Um, so in order to mitigate this type of attack, you really need to rethink the security from within your own network. How can you protect your network from uh, a compromised subscriber or a compromised uh, data center application that would launch an attack either to your own network or to the outside world? And this is where you need to really uh, have a different uh, type of uh, solution where the network would be uh, basically uh, mitigating the attack uh, uh, on behalf of the network operator. Um, and if you're looking at a, a subscriber today, so the subscriber bandwidth is much higher than it used to be, uh, and we've also already had a couple of examples of uh, networks that have been uh, impacted by a large number of subscribers launching an, an attack uh, towards the uh, uh, network operator infrastructure itself. So this, is, this can typically be done by uh, devices from within the uh, subscriber network that are uh, used as part of a botnet, or also, uh, more typically, uh, the home gateway itself. So if the home gateway itself is uh, vulnerable, then it can be used as part of a DDoS. So what we're looking at is, uh, and what I'm gonna present you uh, for the rest of the slide, is really uh, making, uh, how can you make the network part of the solution? So it's really a future mode of operation where uh, instead of uh, using the current mode of operation where the traffic is being uh, redirected to a centralized uh, scrubbing center, like you can see in this, uh, in this slide right now, uh, where the traffic is northbound from a peering edge, detected uh, using NetFlow, redirected to a scrubbing center, cleaned there, and sent to its final destination. Um, what we're looking at is a future mode of operation where uh, with the capability to do payload inspection in the router itself at the speed of the line card, uh, now, instead of mitigating the attack centrally located within your own network, we can mitigate the attack at the edge of the network. So with this type of technology now, you can mitigate the attack at the IP peering edge, at the subscriber edge, or at the data center gateway edge. And this is really a shift in really mode of operation and the capacity of, uh, the, for the network operator to mitigate an attack. Now you can mitigate attack at the speed of the network. So you can mitigate terabit level attacks you can mitigate uh, attacks coming from inbound, outbound. So those type of uh, capability are really critical uh, for the scale of uh, DDoS attacks that we can face today, and also uh, really critical for protecting the entire networks. So when today you can only protect a single customer or a set of customers with this type of technology, now you can protect the entirety of your network infrastructure. If you have a DDoS attack that is uh, towards a set of subnet within your infrastructure, which has happened to a, a number of our uh, customers, um, this type of attack can hardly be uh, sent to a centralized scrubbing center. But by deploying this type of technology at the IP edge of the network, 
now we can uh, leverage uh, the router itself in order to mitigate the volumetric part of the attack. You would still have scrubbing center uh, or inline appliances within your, uh, within your network, and this would be for mitigating application layer attack, but the volumetric part of the attack uh, is now uh, mitigated within the router itself. And this is using two key uh, components. It's this payload inspection capability in the router and uh, a large-scale ACL filtering uh, at the rate of uh, the line cards. So what exactly do we mean by uh, payload uh, capability and payload inspection? Uh, so if you're looking at traditional router, so a traditional router has a visibility into um, the IP header, the TCP and the UDP header, and so typically a traditional router can write ACL based on IP address or port number. So now what you can do uh, with uh, our latest network silicon, which is the FP4, uh, so you can write ACL not just based on IP header and TCP header, you can write ACL based on IP header, TCP header, and the payload of the, uh, within the data. So now basically, instead of dropping traffic based on a port number, so for instance, NTP its port is port 123, uh, and instead of trying to drop or rate limit the entirety of NTP for an NTP reflection attack, what you can do is match a particular payload within the data and only rate limit this particular traffic. So essentially, uh, uh, dropping the traffic based on the signature. And this signature would be the uh, uh, signature uh, marking for that particular uh, distributed denial of service attack. So this is really, really a shift uh, in uh, capability in the router. And with the rise of IoT devices and those terabit level attacks, uh, we believe that this type of technology embedded in the router is really key to uh, mitigate uh, large scale attacks uh, today. So how do we do it? So we have this capability in the router. So how we have this payload inspection, this large-scale URL filtering uh, capability in the router. But uh, we also need an analytic platform. Uh, so obviously this is something that uh, we have also uh, with Nokia. This is our Nokia deep field uh, analytic platform. And this is what we use to identify the DDoS and to program uh, the filtering rules into the router. But really what we have is a, a closed loop, a closed mitigation loop. Um, so we have this analytic platform which is able to ingest uh, telemetry data uh, from uh, the network element. So this telemetry data is related to uh, flow information, related to payload information, and based on this uh, information can uh, correlate um, and identify invariance in traffic. Um, and this analytic platform is also uh, able to identify uh, what is the, uh, what, is a part, what, what are the different IP address part of the attack. So are those IP addresses uh, part of a known botnet? Are those IP addresses uh, part of a cloud infrastructure? Or are those IP addresses um, uh, part of an IPTV uh, uh, network? So those are all metrics that are available in the Atlantic platform in order to make the decision to drop or rate limit a particular traffic. So for instance, if you have an invariance in traffic, and if we see that the traffic is uh, all coming from uh, Netflix, uh, because there is a shift in, uh, in uh, Netflix uh, cloud infrastructure, then we obviously don't want to drop Netflix traffic. So all this is uh, part of this analytic platform that allows us to identify the DDoS, identify the DDoS based on invariance in traffic and based on our uh, cloud genome uh, intelligence. And using those uh, metrics, uh, program the filtering rules down into, into the router. Um, and, we're, we're, uh, and then we, what you really need is you really need a closed mitigation loop because uh, as a network operator, when you deploy a mitigation, uh, you, what you really want to know, to know is after you've deployed the mitigation, you want to understand if this mitigation is actually working or not. So you need feedback telemetry in order to understand if the, traffic, the, the, if the filtering rules that you've deployed are uh, dropping traffic or not. So this is our closed uh, telemetry feedback loop where uh, from the uh, analytic platform, you can see that you have your uh, uh, mitigation ongoing, and you can see that uh, the traffic is being dropped to the level that you expect. So if you have a 10 gig attack or a 100 gig attack or a terabit level attack, then you see that the attack is ongoing and you see the number of uh, packets dropped uh, within the router that would match the size of the attack. So I'm going to walk you through a couple of uh, practical uh, volumetric DDoS uh, that we uh, mitigate within the, uh, with this solution. Uh, but before that, it may be a little bit useful to uh, walk you through 
uh, uh, volumetric attack in general and, and what they represent. So if you're looking at um, uh, volumetric attack, there's really two main categories. So the first category that is shown in this slide is a direct volumetric attack. So in this particular case, uh, we have an attacker uh, which is controlling a botnet and uh, launching a coordinated attack uh, towards uh, a given target. Uh, those attacks can be extremely powerful. Like I mentioned earlier, those botnets can be tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of devices large, right? The second type of attack is an amplification reflection attack. So in an amplification reflection attack, we have an attacker which is taking advantage of uh, open resolvers on the internet, such as an open NTP server or an open DNS server. And in this case, the attacker is uh, sending forged traffic uh, with a so uh, spoofed source IP, and this is uh, uh, basically driving the server to respond uh, to uh, the attack target, which is the forged so uh, sourced IP. So in this particular case, those are also very powerful attack uh, because the traffic is amplified in this case. So the response is larger than the request. Uh, the amplification ratio can be in the hundreds uh, or in the thousand in some cases. So in this case, they can form extremely powerful attack with a smaller set of uh, uh, clients that are compromised. So really from, from the attacker, uh, from the uh, uh, network under attack point of view, uh, the first line of defense has really typically been the uh, IP peering edge, uh, but for doing many, um, uh, mostly um, simplified uh, ACL. So doing anti-spoofing or basic uh, ACL filtering. But now what you can do using the, pre the solution I've mentioned is uh, using those uh, new um, FP4 capabilities. So using this large case ACL filtering and this uh, payload filtering capability in the router. Now the network operator can mitigate the attack straight at the peering edge. So in practice, um, there's a number uh, of uh, volumetric attack that exist today. Uh, so amplification attack is one of the uh, most uh, common, and NTP reflection attack is, is, is one of the most common ones. So in this particular case, you have an attacker which is uh, sending uh, a forge request to an open uh, NTP server, and the response is amplified to the attack target. So in this particular case, what you have in this particular slide is uh, a, a capture of uh, an NTP uh, amplified uh, packet. And in this particular case, we can leverage the uh, FP4 capability and the capability in the router to write ACL based on uh, five tuple information and the payload uh, within the data itself in order to uh, mitigate this particular attack. So what you can see highlighted in red uh, in this particular slide is uh, the signature of the attack. So in an NTP reflection attack, those are called NTP monolist attack. Uh, we can match this particular type of attack by matching the exact monolist request within the packet payload itself. So after you did the UDP header within the NTP payload, we can match this particular traffic. So this is the signature you can see here, this 1700 a This is something that we can write as a normal ACL, as a standard ACL on the router. So we, instead of dropping the entirety of all NTP traffic, we can match and be surgical in the mitigation. And so now, instead of dropping the entirety of NTP traffic, we can only drop the NTP reflection attack and leave the rest of the traffic untouched at the speed of the router. So this is really a shift uh, compared to uh, what you could do uh, uh, previously. Uh, another type of attack uh, could be um, a TCP SYN flood attack. So in the case of a TCP SYN flood attack, you have a, a large botnet, and this botnet is used in a coordinated attack, coordinated attack towards a single target. Uh, so again, uh, for those type of attacks, uh, we can use a DFP4 capability in order to match a particular signature within uh, the traffic in order to uh, drop uh, only the attack traffic from the good traffic. So this is a, a, a real case scenario where uh, the particular attack was launched by a botnet uh, and uh, all of the TCP SYN uh, packet that were sent in an attempt to overload uh, the attack target had uh, a common signature. The common signature was found from within the TCP SYN uh, option uh, uh, fields. So it's a combination of fill within the TCP option. In this particular case, uh, the no operation, the window scale length, and shift count. And this can be used again as a, a match criteria from within a, an ACL in the router in order to drop this traffic in line at the peering edge or the subscriber edge where the attack is coming from. 
So you can write this SQL in the router and drop this attack traffic uh, uh, on the floor and avoid dropping all of the TCP SYN from within your entire network. Sorry. Um, so another type of attack is uh, a DNS uh, reflection attack. Uh, so in this particular case, I am uh, showing a DNS type any reflection attack. Uh, so in this particular attack, uh, similarly to the NTP attack, you have an attacker sending a forged request to an open DNS uh, resolver and the DNS response is being sent to, back to the uh, attack target. Uh, and in this particular case, well, the response is larger than the request, it's an amplification attack, but there is a specific field that we can match within uh, the data payload, and this particular field is the type any for uh, a DNS type any reflection attack. And we can match this particular field using a, a pattern map capability, write this uh, uh, filter as a standard ACL and drop this traffic uh, within the router again. So if you're looking at um, uh, the entire mitigation workflow, there's really four steps in the mitigation workflow. Um, first, there is a, an attack that's ongoing to the network. Uh, this attack is being detected, so this is their telemetry information sent to an analytic platform. Once the attack is detected, then the mitigation is being programmed in the router. So we are looking at invariance and traffic, like I mentioned earlier on, and then programming the proper filtering rules uh, down onto the router. Uh, but if you're looking at the... Uh, complete uh, mitigation workflow and the detail of which interface uh, we are using. So we are only using standardized interface. Um, so when the attack is coming uh, in the router, uh, the first thing that we have is we have NetFlow, CFlow type of information uh, sent to the analytic platform. So this is used uh, to identify invariance in traffic based on five tuple information. But as you know, uh, NetFlow doesn't include the payload information. So how do we get the payload information inside the analytic platform, which is offline? So the way it works is that uh, the analytic platform is uh, sending uh, rules to the router in order to uh, selectively uh, mirror a specific part of the DDoS uh, over a GRE tunnel uh, to the uh, analytic platform. So this is what we call intelligent sampling. So only specific part of the attack traffic is being uh, selected in the router and sent uh, to uh, the analytic platform. So this is how now the analytic platform has both the five tuple information and the payload information in order to program the filtering rules down into the router. So this is the third step in the mitigation. So this, in this step, we're using uh, IGR BGP flow spec uh, or NetConf uh, in order to program uh, the network element. And uh, the last step in the mitigation workflow yeah, is our telemetry uh, feedback loop where we're sending telemetry information uh, back to the analytic platform in order to identify how eff uh, efficient was uh, the mitigation. So this is what I mentioned earlier. From the analytic platform, you can see the number of packets being dropped uh, for a given attack. So what I've mentioned uh, up until now is where all those known DDoS attacks that we can mitigate and uh, within the router, uh, leveraging our uh, payload capability uh, in uh, the FP4 platform. But there's another type of uh, mitigation that can be done uh, in the router. So instead of doing blacklisting, which is like identifying the bad flows and dropping the bad flows, what we can use uh, the router for is for uh, whitelisting traffic. And this can be particularly useful uh, for specific type of use cases. Uh, so this one is a, a gaming application uh, example, where in this particular case, instead of dropping all of the bad traffic, uh, if, you have, if you're in a situation where you control both the client application and the server application, such as in a, a gaming operator type of uh, network, then you can define a known good pattern within the data payload. And by only allowing this known good pattern, then by default, uh, the router will drop all of the bad traffic uh, trying to go to that particular server application. So this is uh, actually something that's, uh, this type of uh, uh, deployment have, have already been deployed by uh, gaming operators. Uh, uh, this is something I just learned uh, this week. So uh, using this type of, uh, uh, of deployment and, uh, and solution, you don't need to chase the byte flow. You can only, the, the router would automatically drop all of, the, uh, all of the bad flows straight in the router because they don't match this particular pattern. Uh, and so this is uh, ending the, the presentation today. Uh, so really, uh, 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 I hope that you are um, uh, having a different perspective now on uh, how to mitigate DDoS. 
Um, you've seen the different uh, technologies that have been deployed over the past uh, 10, 15 years uh, using centralized coming center. And what can be done nowadays in the router in order to mitigate the attack uh, traffic straight in the router, in the line card, at the speed of the router. So this is a solution that uh, can be deployed today and that's available um, uh, from Nokia. And if you have any other question, uh, don't hesitate to uh, ask. Zero. So, uh, thank you, Philippe. Uh, any, quest any questions? Are there? Do we have a mic? Uh, well, at least we have like five seconds. <laughs> so, one of the benefits with doing a presentation on the Friday, or mo Friday morning it's actually that you have 30 minutes and instead of the normal 20 during the rest of the week. So we have a little bit of time. OK, good. Um, I have two questions. Um, do you use uh, BGP uh, blocking for the community blocking? BGP. So we, use, we can use a BGP flow spec for programming the filtering rules and uh, NetConf as well. No, I, I mean using your peering edge. Yeah. So, so you, as you set the community 666 and push that to your remote peering comedy, and they will block the traffic for you. So, but this would be, uh, yeah, so this would be basing, uh, tra dropping traffic not based on the payload information. So this is... Uh, yeah, you can do that, and you can ask your peer to do it, and that will remove the load. You can, you can ask your peerings like Francix and DKIX to use the blocking community, and you just add a community to the payload, to the route, and that will not be sent to you anymore. So there's, so... You cannot, so unless you have a router that allows you to drop the traffic based on the specific payload, mm -hmm. then you wouldn't be able to do that. Well, you, you identified the payload that is wrong. You identified the sources of the IPs, right? No, also, so, the, the, so the, the entire tier of the game is actually to not drop the traffic based on just IP information, but does drop the traffic based on the payload. Yeah, right? but you could use that also. And the second part uh, is to can you uh, wait handle minute, wait the public gigs of uh, traffic? This seems like a debate. Okay. So take it outside in the corridor and uh, take it where it belongs. Uh, we have to stop here and continue with the next presentation. Thank okay. you for listening.